I'm very excited to be here to honor the enormous, enormous amount of work many of you have done to further the field of group work. Some of you editing in international journals, some of you teaching group for years, some of you studying the impact of group treatments, many mentoring the next generation of group therapists and researchers. A board that has reached out to members and the public during COVID, developing resources for online groups and addressing systemic racism in our organizations and our treatment rooms. I had planned for us to celebrate together in person and at first was very disheartened by the awards being another Zoom session. After sitting with my own rage, frustration and disappointment, something I'm getting very good at, I realized that what makes an experience in group meaningful is not the fancy hotel, the free hors d'oeuvres, which I like, the cash bar or the superficial hellos, but the more genuine and meaningful interaction with people you care about. Maya Angelou has a famous quote that I often hold on to, especially in these challenging times with my two little kids. She says, at the end of the day, people won't remember what you said or did, but they will remember how you made them feel. I hope you leave here feeling valued, appreciated, and more connected to our division. In order to make this award ceremony feel more personal and challenge the boundary of online technology, I decided I would invite different people on the board, some of them not on the board, who have a personal connection to the awardees today to say something about each of them. We will start with honoring our fellow, Dr. Jill Paquin. Then we'll present Group Therapist of the Year, Organization of the Year, and Teacher of the Year. Eric Chen, our Diversity Chair, will then present the two Diversity Awards, and Josh Gross, our incoming president, will present the two poster awards, and then we'll honor our retiring board members. The first honoree is our fellow, Dr. Jill Paquin. I felt that receiving this award from her mentor would be meaningful. This is the surprise, Jill. So I invited Dr. Dennis Kivligan to present this honor to Jill and look forward to hearing her acceptance. I'm, set, I'm setting my timer so I don't talk too long because <laughs> there's a lot I could say about Jill. Um, most of it good. Um, so when, um, Jill came to the University of Maryland to work with Ruth Fassinger, and, uh, after, and at some point Ruth abandoned both of us and left, and so Jill, Jill and I started working together. And we'd been working together for a while, and she is sitting in my office saying, you know, Dennis, you're not doing your job as a mentor. Uh, you're not getting me involved in research. Um, and so I started to panic and thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna do? Uh, and I uh, had this old data sitting around uh, on uh, uh, intimate behaviors in, in, group, in counseling groups, and I never figured out what to do with it. And so I thought, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give, give, actually Joe Miles was part of this too, uh, conspiring against me. And uh, so I gave them this, uh, data and said, okay, why don't you look over this and see if you could come up with anything. Now, mind you, I'd had it for years and I hadn't come up with anything to do with it. And so about a week later, uh, Jill comes back and she says, you know, I think there's some interesting patterns in here in terms of absences. And I think we should try to look at how uh, intimate behavior is related to absences in group. I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. And as we talked, uh, it, it became apparent that there was something really important going on there. Because if you know anything about the research on uh, absences in group or attendance in group, that up until the point, uh, this point in time, it had all been about uh, looking at what about the person predicted, whether or not they were going to drop out from group, what, what about the person was going to predict whether or not uh, they came to the next session. And what Jill had done was sort of flip that paradigm on its head and said, why don't we look at what was going on in the session before their absence and see if that might, uh, might be uh, something important that could predict, could predict whether or not the person was going to show up the next week. Um, and you know, in retrospect, it's probably pretty obvious that what's happening in the session has something to do with some, someone uh, showing up the next week or not, but no one had ever looked at that. And 
And I tell you that story is because that's how I think of Jill. She's, she's always thinking of things in a very creative uh, way. She looks at things in, in, in ways that people haven't looked at them before. Uh, when I think about her research, uh, that's the thing that uh, jumps out at me at the most is that she takes old areas of research and looks at them in new ways. And, and in doing that, uh, puts new life into that uh, area of research. And we ended up doing a number of studies looking at absences. From that insight is that it's not about the person as much as it is about the session and what's going on. Um, so the second thing I want to say about Jill and that I think really stands out and uh, I'm sure is part of the reason that she's our newest fellow is that uh, Jill is one of the most, from the time, ever since the time I met her, she has been able to network and get into organizations and provide leadership in those organizations better than anyone I've ever known. She has truly um, made a difference in a number of different organizations, not just Division 49, also within uh, Division 17. Uh, she's involved with the American Group Psychotherapy Association. She's just uh, uh, very good at getting involved in organizations and, and helping them uh, do their missions better. Um, the one thing that I think is really important to mention is that, um, so Jill is the first uh, female editor of a group journal. And I think that that uh, it says uh, something about her, uh, both her, uh, the quality of the research and how she came uh, into people's attention because they saw the quality of the research, but also the quality of the leadership and her ability to uh, work with people and to get people to work together towards a goal. So I am extremely pleased, and it's been five minutes and 12 seconds. I am extremely pleased to be able to uh, introduce Jill Paquin and uh, to say congratulations on uh, being Division 49's newest fellow. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. That was really nice. Um, thank you. That was unexpected. Um, well, uh, thanks. So I am, um, I am really honored uh, and um, very touched and moved by that. Um, I have, um, uh, we do not have the, the luxury of being together in person today and because I think we all may be a little zoomed out. Um, I, this is not the fellow's address that I, I may have given in another context, but I'm gonna, and for the sake of brevity, I'm also gonna keep this as brief as possible. Um, I'm gonna share my screen, um, host disabled attendee screen sharing. I'm, I'm I am, so you're okay now. Can I try again? Can, can you see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, so it is, um, I, I think bef before I start, I, I just, I have a, I have some people I would really like to thank. Um, I would really like to thank Drs. Dennis Kivligan, Ruth Fassinger, Joe Miles, uh, Rebecca McNair Siemens, David Marcus, Sally Barlow, Lisa Drogos, Sherry Marmarash, Julie Arsenault, Patrick Grzanka, Deanna Hamilton, and Nikki Coleman for their professional mentorship and friendship over the years. They are brilliant, special people, and I feel so lucky to call them friends and peers. I'd also like to give thanks to Molin Lesh for becoming a more recent mentor to me and to all of my peers and friends at Division 49, which has been a professional home for me as a psychologist. 
Um, I also want to thank my friends and peers at AGPA and my wonderful students, advisees, and colleagues at Chatham University, where I'm an associate professor. I want to thank my amazing research team members and all of my supervisors and clients over the years. And I'd like to especially thank my partner, Colin Callahan, with whom uh, we've made our own little group over the past 20 years. Um, so it is indeed fortuitous when you find yourself in need of remarks uh, for a fellow's address and you've just gone to press on a huge project that is a culmination of multiple strands of your passions and research interests and editorial work in the areas of women's advancement, social justice work, and group therapy. Um, uh, when, when you when you need to do, when you need to come up with something to talk about, um, so I'm really excited to be able to share um, some of that work with you today, and I'm going to keep it as brief as possible. Um, these two quotes uh, give you a sense of of where of the landscape of my personal and professional life. Um, sort of over the course of my career and it, since, um, since the lockdown. Um, both um, the Audre Lord piece, which has been kind of a guiding um, principle for me in, in what drives my work and um, what I strive to empower and, um, in others. Uh, and then the second quote, I just, I, I, is a, as a, um, a way to, to, to help your level of engagement, just, Get curious about that one. If, if, you're, if you're not already curious about it, uh, if you can, get curious about that. We'll come back to that one. Um, so I'm very excited. Uh, I had the opportunity to um, uh, work on a special issue uh, dedicated to um, women in group work uh, with my co-editor, uh, Nikki Coleman. We have a special section on gender identity and group therapy edited by Joe Miles. So, Please keep an eye out for this. This is due out very soon. Um, the paper in there that I'd like to share a couple of highlights from is a paper included um, that I wrote with some of my colleagues called A Brief History of Group, um, A Brief History of Group uh, as a Field and the Representation of Women in Its Development. And um, we were curious we had a few questions but the ones i want to share with you today um we were curious about the canon of group psychotherapy literature and given that women outpace men in terms of their accessing group therapy services we were cu curious to see um what uh, to what extent has the focus specifically been on women in group psychotherapy scholarship and within that, um, what has the focus specifically been on subgroups of women? So women of color, sexual minority women, um, and then thematically, what has that focus been? So we looked at four of the main um, group focus journals. We looked at two big clinical journals, and then we looked at three women and feminist focus journals. And we did keyword searches and abstracts and titles. And for the group focus journals, um, you can see that the majority of group articles are not specifically focused on women. So we've got, um, let's see, for the IJGP, um, just over 94% of the articles there are not specifically focused on girls or women. Of the articles that are focused on girls or women, a very small fraction of those um, are focused on groups of women of color. Um, for group dynamics, which is Division 49's journal, of, of the articles that have been published about group psychotherapy, very small portion of them, so less than 2% have specifically focused on girls or women, and then of those, two articles focus specifically on um, groups of women um, not minoritized women, so non-white, non-dominant culture women. Um, so again, I'm just trying to pique your interest here. Uh, if you're interested in, in um, a deeper look um, at the themes of what these were about, I invite you to check out the article. So I also want to show you 
Um, so women have obviously been involved in group therapy as a specialty since its inception as a treatment modality. And there are many ways of leading um, and women are very well represented. They numerically dominate um, in terms of being group therapy leaders because more women um, than men are social workers, counselors, psychologists, and, and recent data show that there are more women than men are in psychiatry. So if, if you go to a therapy group, you're more likely to have a woman leading your therapy group than a man. Um, and representation and leadership is important. Um, but women are not represented um, across domains of leadership. And editorial leadership is one domain in which women are not well represented. So we were also interested in looking at editorial leadership because editorial leadership is in many ways a very important gatekeeping role for a field and a specialty. Um, so we looked at the Journal of Group Dynamics. Um, we were curious to see if the same sort of patterns of participation across editorial um, boards in the social sciences generally and in medicine generally would hold true in sort of our little corner of the world in terms of group therapy practice and as a specialty. Um, and, and they do. So we can see the beginning of the journal group dynamics in 1997 um, started out with, with a 90% um, male dominated board. Um, we've seen a little bit of shifting, a little bit of growth in that area and where we end up um, is still um, seen some, uh, I, I don't know that we'd call it equity. Um, we've seen some growth and change, but we still where we end up in 2019 um, as of last year is still a, a, a fairly male dominated board. Um, IJGP, which has a longer history, was founded in 1951. Um, we get the, a, a similar picture in terms of um, uh, where we started um, and then and where we end up. And you can see in the between in the 60s, we did five year increments here in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. I mean, we're, those are in the white are raw numbers. So those five, six, five, seven, eight women, um, they were they were a lonely, a lonely, brave crew. Um, So what's, what seems clear um, is that more women than men um, are therapy group leaders, but we're not considered the thought leaders in the field. So we're not serving in editorial leadership roles for graduate students taking a course in group counseling or group therapy. They're really unlikely to read a textbook that's been authored or co-authored by a woman. Um, we're not publishing research at uh, the same rates as men, and um, we're, 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 there are much smaller numbers of women who are um, given fellow status in APA, for example. And importantly, these numbers are even smaller for groups of women of color, um, but we're not doing a great job of tracking these demographic and social identity data, um, which, um, which I learned when you set out to write sort of a, a historical review. Um, it's also true that more women than men are therapy group members. Women comprise um, the majority of um, consumers of mental health care services, and that includes group. Uh, but most scholarship has not specifically focused on women. And again, importantly, these numbers are even smaller for women of color, sexual minority women, and other groups of women uh, who are further marginalized by their systems of oppression. Um, and so I have been thinking, as I am officially um, in my last year, according to APA, of early career status, um, I have been thinking more and more um, uh, about what the future of our field will look like, as I know many of you have been thinking about this um, for, for a long time, um, and how what we do now is going to impact the future. And so these are some of my um, ideas, and I invite you all to um, to continue thinking about this with me. Um, but I'm reminded that systems level problems require systems level solutions. Um, and so publishers and editors, we can be doing a better job of tracking these data to be um, documenting the problem and um, documenting progress or lack of progress so that we can develop um, better interventions and solutions. 
Um, we can be continuing to advocate to eradicate racism, sexism, poverty, and other forms of oppression um, that are going to continue to work against um, any efforts uh, that we're making at a more micro level to, um, to, to, to fight against inequities in these areas. Um, better systemic supports for working parents, uh, particularly in the U.S. So going back to the, the quote from The Guardian, um, uh, as long as um, you know, women continue to bear more of the responsibility of taking care of children and elder care uh, at disproportionate rates, um, I think we're still going to see uh, disparities in terms of who is able to take on leadership roles like editorial service and um, it continue to engage in, in high levels of, of, of scholarly work. Um, and then it's also continuing to create opportunities for mentoring into scholarship and editorial work. Um, so as much, I think, sort of a paradox of group-oriented people. Um, I love working on things alone. Um, and at the same time, every time I choose to work on something alone, um, or with already established colleagues, or with other white colleagues, or for my white male colleagues, when you choose to invite other white male colleagues onto projects, that's an opportunity that's not going to a woman or not going to a person of color. So just being cognizant of that and being a bit more intentional about um, where, uh, where your, the consequences of your actions in terms of um, choosing um, to invite or not invite um, others onto projects that you're working on. Uh, making sure that if you have editorial board positions open that you're filling them if you have the power to fill them. And I know this is a small audience that I'm speaking to as, as, an, as an editor speaking, speaking to other editors. Um, I have an open, I, I will be having an open associate editor position and I have the choice of filling that or not. Um, and there's downsides to filling it. It's work for me to fill it, to find a qualified person to do it and to mentor them and to train them. Um, in some ways, it would be easier for me to do the work um, myself. Um, but that's an editorial leadership position. That's an opportunity for somebody um, to be mentored into that experience. And so um, uh, I, I, will, I, will need, I, I will need to think carefully about whether or not I, um, I leave a position like that unfilled. So I can just share with you, I'm not going to. Um, and, uh, and also to keep in mind, um, the research shows that um, most, um, most women um, who are involved in editorial service do so on an ad hoc basis, not in an official editorial board capacity. So that's something else to think about um, because an editorial board position has, comes with it more, you have more influence about the direction a journal takes um, and it comes with more um, uh, status and, and pre prestige and can be um, advantageous in a variety of different ways. So that's something else to be thinking about. Um, and then uh, there's only so much time and energy in, in a day. And so when thinking about um, sharing our skills, sharing our social capital, um, who are you, who, who are you willing to put in extra time with in terms of um, uh, mentoring, um, in terms of if, if the goal is um, reducing some of these inequities that I'm talking about, um, uh, my, dis my calculus and my decision making is going to look a little bit different knowing what I know um, in terms of um, how I think about and how I make decisions around mentoring. Um, I forgot to time myself, but I think um, I was me. I was trying to come in under twelve minutes, and I hope I hope I succeeded. Um, but please um, consider if you're if you're for those of you teaching um, group courses this fall, please consider um, adding um, this paper, uh, which again provides a historical overview of the development of group as a specialty. Um, from it fills in a lot of gaps about where women. Um, and including um, women of color have been in the development of this um, specialty. And also please consider um, 
uh, some of the other articles in the special issue. I'm really proud of it. Um, I'm really excited with how it turned out. There's a lot of excellent work from a lot of excellent authors included in it. Thank you for your time and thank you for this amazing honor. Thank you so much, Jill. We are very lucky to have you be a part of Division. I'm all fired up <laughs> after your talk. Our next award is one of the most prestigious awards we give each year. Uh, it is the Arthur Teicher Group Psychologist of the Year. This award honors a distinguished group psychologist whose theory, research, or practice has made important contributions to our knowledge of group behavior. Given Martin Whittingham, our past president's relationship with the recipient this year, I'm going to hand the Zoom square to Martin, who will present the award. Okay, hi everybody, um, uh, and thanks Sherry. Uh, I'm really honored to be able to present Lee with this award. And uh, for those of you who don't know uh, our history, uh, Lee's actually the reason I became a psychologist. Um, uh, many years ago, I was at an adventure therapy program, uh, conference uh, and at the time I was on the fence about, you know, do I go PhD recreation? Do I do PhD counseling psychology? Um, and I went to Lee's lecture. Uh, and, and it's one of those things where if you remember what you were like when you were a student uh, and, you know, you, you're trying to work out what you want to do, but also sort of who you want to be. You know, so you're looking for people and looking at them and thinking, is that a kind of person I want to be that I want to evolve into? And I remember listening to the lecture and thinking it was just outstanding. It was just sharp and brilliant and thoughtful. And it gave me so much material. And then I also thought, you know, this is a person as well. This is an authentic, genuine human being who, if I'm, you know, as close to being as authentic as he is by the time I get, you know, uh, more advanced in my career, I'll be very happy. Uh, and that's Lee. You know, he really uh, embodies, I think, not just academic excellence, but also what it means to be a sort of human being and to be a person in the room uh, at all times. And if you know Lee, he's a lovely, genuine man. Uh, and that's one of the things that's always shone through about him. So in a sense, this group psychologist, I think, award represents the, the privilege he's given his students over the years of how many have seen him as a person, as a human being, and as a teacher. Uh, and also not to say the rest of his leadership, like being president of Division 49, moving adventure therapy forward, publishing. Uh, you know, Lee has really been a giant in the field. Uh, and for Division 49, he has been uh, a tremendous asset and a tremendous person that we've, I think, all benefited from in different ways. So it's my real privilege to, uh, and I wish I was there in person to do it, to present Lee with the award this year for Group Psychologist of the Year. Lee, Lee, we can't hear you. We, can, we can't hear you. Can hear <laughs> you can hear Thank me. Thank you very much, Martin. Yeah, I'm the one who should know how to unmute myself since I'm here all the time. But I was I'm, uh, just quite honored and humbled. And I owe a number of people on this call quite a bit. And um, I was told not to prepare anything by Josh. So I didn't except to say thank you very much. Thank you. We're all like applauding. We all wish we could give you a hug. <laughs> it was I wish you could give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can we do a high five? That's right. <laughs> Thanks. Zoom contact. Um, our next award is Excellence in Group Practice. This award recognizes outstanding contributions to the practice of group psychotherapy and or the applied group intervention. This year, we are very honored um, to be honoring McLean Hospital, who's affiliated with Harvard Medical School, and the incredible amount of group work they provide to diverse patients struggling with eating disorders, personality disorders, depression, anxiety, and trauma. Dr. Philip Lemondusky is here to accept the award. He is a longstanding member of the McLean Hospital Harvard Medical School faculty and the Senior Vice President of Clinical Program Development, Director of Psychology, co-director of psychology training and associate professor at Harvard Medical School. I am thrilled that he is here to accept the award 
given his lead role in the development and oversight of the hospital's most highly recognized group therapy initiatives. Unlike many hospitals, this program's philosophy was based on an integrated individual and group therapy approach where patients, staff, and family work together to address a wide variety of mental health issues. The program includes inpatient, partial, and outpatient levels of care, and all utilize integrated individual and group treatments so that all of the patients are getting both individual and group psychotherapy. In addition to helping patients, they house an APA-accredited internship that facilitates the training of new group therapists. During COVID, when some hospitals stopped group treatment completely, which in DC, a lot of these hospitals just dropped the treatment completely, they continued to treat patients and shifted to an online telehealth model. This initiative allowed their patients to have online access to both individual and group therapy services. And if that wasn't enough to facilitate such a challenging online shift for a large hospital, they also wrote about it and shared their experience in an article they published this year in the Journal of Psychotherapy Integration. We would like to present Dr. Lewandowski and McLean Hospital this honor today, as they have truly modeled how organizations can both provide critical group services to patients in need, even during a pandemic. They also are training the next generation of group leaders that value group psychotherapy. Oh, I don't know if I see uh, Dr. Lewandowski. It's so hard, I can't see if he's here. I hope he's here. Got it. Hear me all? Oh, hi, there you are. There we are. Literally just ran in the door, got stuck in traffic. Uh, so I'm glad I could uh, uh, arrive right in time. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate the reception of this award uh, for McLean Hospital. Uh, there's no one individual in our uh, consortium of different talents uh, that is responsible for this accomplishment. It's a real, real uh, team effort. Uh, when I arrived at McLean back years before many of you were born, uh, the treatment model was long-term psychodynamic psychoanalytic treatment, which translated into patients uh, hung around for their hourly uh, therapy session once a day. Uh, and uh, that was the model at the time. The use of groups uh, at that stage was uh, relatively rare. Uh, and we had the good fortune of uh, having a psychology run inpatient unit uh, that allowed us uh, to put together a model that is a combination of group treatments, uh, psychoeducational experiences, good solid individual psychotherapy uh, and strong uh, presence of psychopharmacology, family therapy, et cetera. Uh, that was a small unit. It ran for the better part of 20 years. Uh, and then over time, as the Berkeley supported country, I created our of disorder program, uh, uh, our borderline personality dis uh, programs for adolescents, borderline personality disorder programs for uh, adults, all of them, 80% of the variance that determines the therapeutic aspects of it comes from the group activities. Uh, patients don't sit around watching TV in a group and that becomes group therapy. Uh, these are active groups. Uh, they're well thought out and they are definitely connected to uh, the models, the, the empirically supported kinds of treatments uh, that uh, they are based on. Uh, it's been a wonderful time at McLean watching this uh, evolve and probably nearest and dearest to my heart is the training program. Uh, from day one with our training program, we had that configuration of a new program with a heavy emphasis on groups, talented young psychologists coming to train with us. And I'd say that uh, our program, can't, can't uh, say this exactly, uh, but I'd be very surprised if we're not in the top 10% of giving, giving our in, uh, interns exposure to group, group treatment. Typical week for an intern, they're running six or seven groups. Uh, they're doing it under close supervision. 
Uh, they're often being filmed for their work, uh, and it is a critical part of their uh, treatment. But like our model, it's not a group internship. It's a comprehensive clinical psychology internship. So they're also doing their individual work and working with other disciplines as well. Uh, I want to close by giving special recognition to a near and dear friend. Uh, Dr. Joe Powers uh, is a psychologist. Uh, he, many of you are likely uh, know Joe. Uh, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago at a very, very young age. Uh, and he was one of those uh, leaders in terms of getting these uh, group initiatives underway. So I offer a special thanks to Joe uh, up there in heaven, and I'm sure he's looking down smiling, uh, that uh, he uh, has great uh, uh, component of uh, the CBS programs and auditors. So thank you very, very, very much. Uh, it's really an honor to have the uh, opportunity to submit the application uh, and to write, uh, uh, describe the kinds of things that we do. Uh, you guys, uh, the APA uh, division is, you know, is such a, a strong one in terms of groups. Uh, it makes it that much more uh, an honor for us to be recognized. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Phil, and thank you for all the hard thank work you. you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. The next award is Excellence in Teaching of Group Dynamics. So this award is granted to a teaching professional who has demonstrated excellence in teaching or mentoring in the area of group psychology and our group psychotherapy at the undergraduate or graduate level. So this year, our winner is Dr. Gerald Lee Shapiro, and I see him right there. I think he's like in the square to the right. Um, um, I had the pleasure of talking to Jerry briefly last year, and I'm very excited to be presenting this award to him today. Uh, during our conversation, I was just so impressed with his knowledge of group therapy, his passion for writing. He's written over 13 books, I believe, and your commitment to training graduate students in counseling psychology um, doctoral program. For those of you who may not know Jerry, he has been teaching group psychotherapy and group leadership at Santa Clara University since 1982 where he also served as the chair of the program more than once. He's written two books on group psychotherapy. The first is Brief Group Treatment, a Practical Guide for Therapists and Counselors on Methods of Group Psychotherapy and Encounter a Tradition of Innovation. He's also authored over 130 journal articles and book chapters, made over 200 professional presentations and addresses and appeared in popular print and electronic media in over 200 radio and TV programs. He's been really popular. Um, he's in Wikipedia. How many of you can say that? That's very rare. <laughs> Jerry has devoted his career to teaching group therapy, supervising graduate students' clinical work, and promoting group treatment. It is truly an honor to finally meet you, Jerry, even though it's through Zoom, and to give you this award today. Thank you. Um, I was also told not to prepare anything, and I, I always follow directions. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I do want to say thanks to everybody. This is incredibly meaningful to me. Uh, it's very touching. Um, I did my first group in 1965, um, and I've been teaching in graduate programs and group since 1969. Um, it's been a passion. I just believe in group training. Um, I felt very much like a, a lonely voice in the wilderness for many years, trying to promote group uh, as, as a primary modality. This just feels like a wonderful acknowledgement of all that work and a half a century. So I'm very pleased and I, I thank you all very much. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for all the years and all your work. Um, our next awards are going to be presented by Eric Chen, who is the diversity chair. And so I'm going to let Eric present these. Thank you, Sherry. Actually, we have two diversity awards. So to, uh, at the risk of to making this somewhat informal, so I'm going to present two 
M, M awards. So the both uh, the recipients happen to have the first name so starting with the letter M. So it's the uh, M and M awards. So the first uh, award, uh, let me, uh, some of you may know the Michelle. So the Michelle Rivero is a staff psychologist at Oregon State University's Counseling Center. In addition to her clinical work, she has utilized her expertise in small groups to help white students, faculty, and staff to examine their white identity. Nationally, Michelle has demonstrated her clear commitment to diversity and social justice. She serves as a co-chair of diversity training and community change subcommittee for the Council Diversity Workgroup as part of the Council of Representatives from APA. Her recently co-edited book is titled Examining Social Identities and Diversity Issues in Group Therapy and it is an important contribution to diversity in group work. On behalf of the diversity committee and as a former Oregonian, I'm delighted to present to you, Michelle, the, word, the award for outstanding professional contribution to diversity in group psychology or group psychotherapy. Thank you, Eric. Um, I just want to appreciate, um, Jill, what you shared is really um, profound. I think, I don't know if Jill's still on here or not, um, but I, I, I'm more of a practitioner than a writer. Um, and uh, I want to say I'm just dabbling in writing and I want to appreciate Josh, who's been an amazing mentor to me um, and many women as well. Uh, Rebecca, I want to um, shout out to you, who is an amazing writer, and, and Jill, you kind of pushing forward in the field is so valuable, and so I just want to um, appreciate the intersections of um, gender and race um, and how important it is, and I don't, I don't know if I really deserve this award, um, but um, I, I appreciate um, the recognition, Eric, and everyone for um, for this honor. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, as some of you may know, uh, Michelle has uh, agreed uh, graciously to present uh, at our next uh, diversity committee um, event uh, in a few weeks, uh, maybe early September, about uh, the intersectional identity. So I hope you would uh, attend that presentation. So next aim award is um, for Mary Baggio. Mary Bejo is a PhD candidate in clinical psychology at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Through her training experiences, she is committed to serving culturally diverse and underserved individuals through group therapy work. She is currently a member of the Nevada Psychological Association's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. We at the Diversity Committee recognize Mary's commitment and potential to use group therapy as a platform for diversity and social justice issues in her future endeavors. On behalf of the com committee, I'm delighted to present to Mary the Diversity Award students for, uh, in group psychology or group psychotherapy. Mary, congratulations. Thank you so much, Eric. I'm. I just want to say I'm so humbled to have received this award, especially at such an important time in our history. Um, and receiving this award just adds that much more fuel to the fire, to my fire to want to go forward in my career dedicated to the service of social justice and diversity issues and equity. And um, I'm so I'm a student and right now I'm headed off to my internship. It's going to start very soon at the Wisconsin Department of Corrections. And I am very, very excited to be um, emphasizing group and um, the service of social justice in my internship and then continuing that in my career. Um, and I'm just inspired by these times and by this whole group um, and by receiving this award. So just thank you so much to the division and the diversity committee. And then a special thanks to Dr. Noelle LaForge, um, her never ending mentorship has gotten me, I mean, everywhere that I have gotten today. So thank you to you, Dr. LaForge. And this is just such an honor. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Our next awards go to students who submitted posters and will be presented by Josh Gross. 
You have to do your sound. Sure, sir. Here we go. <laughs> it's my honor <laughs> to uh, present the uh, 2020 Poster Awards. The Society offers awards for students presenting posters at the uh, annual convention. And we give two awards. We uh, give one for best poster, and we also give an award for uh, posters that uh, with themes to promote cultural diversity, social justice, and equity through group psychology and group psychotherapy. We'll start with the uh, student poster award for diversity. Um, and it was a uh, <clears throat> poster called Psychoeducational Groups for Latinos, Group Cohesion's Influence on Fostering Safe Learning Environments, authors Ediza Garcia, Elizabeth Terrazas Carrillo, uh, Evelyn Campos, Alejandro Flores, and Amanda Rodriguez. And uh, thank you so very much for submitting your poster. Is there someone here to receive and speak? Hello, I'm Edisa Garcia. Thank you so much. I know uh, Evelyn and Alex are on. I don't see them, but at least they can say hi. Here, hello. I'm here also, yes. Welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. We appreciate it. Many of us spend our careers mentoring and developing students and the production of uh, posters at APA is central to all of this. So we thank you for that. Thank the uh, Society Awards General Posters. This year's post po best poster for Division 2020 is Boosting Resilience, four-week DBT-informed group in counseling centers by uh, authors Sunhi Lee, Elena Berkowitz, and Sunita Aurora. And uh, we'll be having a plaque to all of you. Sorry, we're doing paper proofs, but that's what we've got right now. Is there someone to speak for the award? We have Ishta, the student, so she may want to speak. Please, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I just want to thank you, everyone. It's been a great honor being uh, being a member here in this award ceremony. There are so many stalwarts here. I didn't expect this to go this way. I am currently in India, and it's 4 a.m., and I haven't slept all night, and I can say that it's all worth it because it's been great seeing you all and learning from you and getting inspired. I want to thank Dr. Sumili very much, who mentored me into this particular group that I ran at the counseling center at UMBC for a year. And I want to take it forward at my future placements as well. And I want to bring it to India as well. So uh, I really want to thank you a lot. And thanks to APA for recognizing our effort. And I wish that we continue doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so nice to have you here. Thank yes. Jerry, sure, I think um, it goes back to you. I think it goes back to me. Um, it's an honor to acknowledge the hard work of members who are leaving the board. Um, this year, we have three people leaving the board and one who is remaining. The first award goes to Martin Whittingham, who is our past president of Division 49. Yeah, there he is. We want to thank you, Martin, for your years of service and dedication to the division. If you missed the business meeting yesterday, Martin has done an incredible amount of work these last three years. He's been involved in the Healthcare Advisory Board and worked to get online group therapy approved as a reimbursable treatment under the emergency provisions within Medicare and Medicaid, which is, is, which is a huge thing for group therapists to be getting reimbursed at this time. So that's a huge thank you for all the hard work that you've done for that. He also immediately took on the challenge of understanding the limits of online group treatment and began writing about guidelines for its use. I remember when they first went on and we were talking, he was like, I'm right on it, like right on it with all the things that we need to know and to think about. Um, he's currently working to get utilization data to support the value of group treatment, and he doesn't stop. He just keeps working hard to promote group psychotherapy. Despite his enormous workload that he carries, because he's often presenting internationally his model of group psychotherapy, he remains calm and clear-headed and focused on the big picture, always focused on promoting group psychotherapy. When I came into this role, Martin was encouraging, supportive, and more important, he's been very honest. I've learned a lot as I've watched him build important relationships within APA and AGPA. 
and he is a natural leader. Because of his talent and vision, we all, all wanted to keep him on the board. Um, we created a task force to create group as a specialty with him as the leader. So we can continue working with us, AGPA, and other group organizations as we fight for group treatment being a specialty. Thank you so much, Martin, for all of the work you've done, for the way you have modeled group leadership, for your friendship, and for the ways you've supported us all during the last three years. <laughs> Do you want to say anything or no? It's been a privilege, I think. Uh, <laughs> No, it has. I've, 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 I mean, for those, I think I said this to the board before, but I've never been on such a hardworking board, and uh, it's an inspirational group, and, and I think their hard work just inspires me to work harder, and, uh, and I think we're in a really uh, uh, important moment for group, uh, and I think if we can keep, keep this focus and if we can keep this uh, going, I think there's, you know, uh, there's no limit. So I'm just really proud to be involved with this group and honoured. Uh, to serve with all of you because I, I just your work inspires me so thank you yeah thank you so much so much for what you've done the next person um, i want to acknowledge is amy nitza amy is the current treasurer and will be transitioning to the president-elect position so we are very very lucky to have her stay on the board and we don't have to say goodbye amy has done an outstanding job managing our finances and keeping us focused it is an important role that does not always get a lot of attention, but Amy is the one who helps provide awards, plans help with the convention, addresses initiatives to build membership, and strengthens the financial resources within our division. Thank you, Amy, for years of service, and we look forward to having you join us as president-elect. Thanks, everyone. Good to see all your faces. The next person I want to honor is Verlin Hintz. Verlin, there you are. Verlin is our domain representative for group psychology and an important member of our board. I know we will miss his uncanny awareness of all of the details in the bylaws. I was often floored by his immediate knowledge of procedures and how helpful he was at keeping us on track when a bunch of group therapists all get together and start talking. Verlin offers something every group needs, a strong, intelligent voice that is not afraid to disagree. There have been many, many times that I've appreciated Verlin and his perspective and how it influenced the group process, opening the space for others to share their perspectives and to disagree. It is not easy to speak up and say what you think. I know we will miss his honesty, his incredible knowledge of the division and of group dynamics and his commitment to the board. Thank you so much Verlin for your service to Division 49. I want to thank all of you for all that you've done for me and all the kind of education I've gotten over the years. Thank you. Thank you. The next person I want to honor is Jen Martin. Jen is here. Um, she's a representative for group practice who has made a huge impact on the division. Often Jen is the one who volunteers immediately for different tasks and does some of the things that are not as glamorous, like revising our bylaws. In addition to her insanely successful group practice, she also devotes time to building our practice resources. She's led the initiative this year to develop an online format for people seeking group training to get linked to different opportunities to do group work. This is an invaluable um, resource to graduate students, interns, and professionals who are interested in group therapy. In addition, she worked with Martin to develop a paper and training webinar and guidelines for group telehealth. And personally, Jen brings a heart to our organization. She is warm, supportive, and thoughtful. She's welcoming to new members. She was very welcoming to me as president coming in. She's also extremely smart and quickly notices the key issues before us. Jen, I hope you leave this meeting knowing how much we value your work for the division and how much we will miss you. Jen is here. It looks like she's not. She's here. not. She left. She had some family. She left. I'm glad I'm taping this. 
Um, Meredith Titler is our student representative for Division 49. Um, and so many times I forgot that she was a student during the meetings and she's so thoughtful and knowledgeable and professional, um, unlike from some of us. Um, I've been amazed at how much work she's done for the division to reach out to students while doing her own schoolwork. For example, she was moving for internship and still put together the training director meet and greet for the conference that you had last yesterday. It was a lot of work to do when you're also focused on finishing your own training, but that is how Meredith is. Despite her own work, she finds the time to prioritize the division. She was there for the community check-in that Eric Chen organized. She was always welcoming students at the APA convention socials that Misha organized, and she helped with the online training resources that Jen led. Thank you so much, Meredith, for all the hard work you've done. I know that we will miss you, and I also know we will find you and recruit you back on the board in the future. Thank you for your service. I think she's here. So we only have one more award. I have one, one more award, and I get to, I didn't realize this, but I get to choose a presidential award. And so this year I wanted to give an award um, to someone who has done an incredible job doing what group therapists do best, which is reaching out to people in a time of loss, pain, and isolation to provide hope and connection. So many of you, as you know, these last seven months have been extremely challenging with COVID, social distancing, incredible loss, and horrific racial injustice and in inequities exposed. Eric Chen, despite his own reactions, feelings, and experiences, immediately reached out to others. First, he organized a community check-in so members could feel less isolated and more supported. Soon after, he reached out with the online resources for group therapists. Nine pages, he continually updates so that others have the resources that they need. After that, he organized a webinar with Dr. Aziza Belcher-Platt titled Black Lives Matter in Therapy Groups 2, How Do Therapists Disarm Racial Microaggressions? He made this webinar downloadable on our resource page and also shared it with AGPA and other people doing group work. Now he has plans for more webinars with Michelle Riviero and Joe Miles on important topics related to diversity. Despite his own personal experiences with living in New York City during one of the worst outbreaks of COVID-19 and his own experiences of discrimination, he has prioritized the needs of the members of Division 49. When it would be easy to give up, Eric worked harder to reach out. On the board, Eric asked us to look at our own organization and to commit to increasing diversity on the board and in our new members. He also invited us to think about how we can make our division more welcoming so that we don't lose members after they join. His presence, his character, and passion for social justice has made our division stronger in a very short amount of time. Eric, I don't know where you are. Thank you so much for what you have brought to Division 49. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, I'm quite touched. I've been with Division 49 for almost 20 years now. And this year is really, really difficult. But at the same time, I feel so fortunate. I share with you all, I've attended so many board meetings. I found so much support from you all to help me through these moments of darkness. And so I cannot thank you enough. In fact, it is you guys who deserve this award because you were there to support me when I experienced some of those issues, challenges here as a New Yorker. So thank you all for accompanying me uh, through this process. And I look forward to working with you all to make a difference in our world. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. So that ends our award ceremony. I just want to thank you all for being here. Um, I hope you attend our social, um, which I think is the same link that you got on here. Um, and also, I hope we see you in APA next year at the convention in person. Thank you so much for all the work you've done. It's been an incredible opportunity for me to be able to lead such a great group of people. Thank you. To the minute, Madam President. <laughs> is it really? I didn't even look at the time. To the minute. Good job. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Relief. And thank you for your leadership. It's been fantastic. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you very it's been much. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Mary and Lisa. Thanks, everyone. I want to say the same thing, Sherry. Great leadership. It's been a hard year to lead, and you've mm -hmm. risen above. So thank oh, you. Thank you. Sure. 100%. Thank you.
But you guys made it a lot easier because you guys work really, really hard. Really great group of people. So thank you. Bye. I guess you can turn off the camera.